Simon Patterson was planning his wedding. Being a rich man, he did everything to ensure his guests could clearly see that he was well off. Simon worked as a surgeon in a private hospital, which was considered one of the best hospitals in the entire Northeast of the United States. His reputation was impeccable, and his professionalism and dedication to his work earned him the respect of his colleagues. By the time the ceremony was supposed to start, the restaurant was filled to capacity. Waiters were circulating among the guests, trying to make sure each and every one of them had everything they needed. The bride was dressed in a beautiful dress and looked like a real princess. However, few of Simon's acquaintances knew that the man only agreed to get married under the pressure of his bride. Ashley quickly saw the advantages of getting married to the wealthy surgeon, who could easily become the department chief or even the chief of surgery in his near future. The woman loved expensive things and wanted to live a rich life, and Simon could give her all of it. The ceremony was in full swing when a boy of about six years old came into the restaurant. He looked like a beggar. The boy didn't look good, which was mostly because of his old clothes. They weren't just simply old, they actually seemed to be falling apart. The boy's clothes were probably bought at a flea market or a garage sale. Since the celebration was already in full swing, None of the guests paid any attention to the little boy who came to the restaurant for only one reason. The boy's name was Bobby, and more than anything in the world, he wanted to see the bride and groom. Since they were standing a few dozen yards away from him, it wasn't all that easy to do. There were many guests, and it was rather hard for the little boy to push through them and to get to the stage where the bride and groom were standing. When Bobby finally managed to get through the crowd, he approached the newlyweds. Seeing the bride, the boy couldn't help but tear up. Mother? Mommy? Bobby exclaimed, unable to contain his emotions. Seeing the boy, the bride turned pale and involuntarily took a step back. Bobby, is that you? How did you get here? Simon asked in surprise. The most interesting thing was that the surgeon actually knew the boy standing in front of them. But what surprised Simon the most was the fact that Bobby called Ashley his mom. The surgeon remembered the name of the boy's mother perfectly well, and it wasn't Ashley. Mom, why are you pretending not to know me? Why are you avoiding me? Bobby exclaimed with tears in his eyes and stepped closer. After the boy's words, the bride blushed to the very roots of her hair and tried to quietly leave the stage. What's the matter, Ashley? Why is Bobby calling you his mom? Simon asked, raising his voice. The surgeon hated surprises, especially the ones that could embarrass him in public. Without waiting for his bride to respond, Simon walked up to Bobby and patted him on the shoulder. He met Ashley about six months ago under very strange circumstances. He didn't know her back then and didn't even think about marriage. Looking at Bobby, memories flooded the man's mind, forcing him to relive everything that happened to him six months ago. His bride Ashley grew up in a wealthy family, and if her parents hadn't died in a car accident, her financial situation wouldn't have changed. But now, the woman had to plan her future on her own and build a new life for herself. When Ashley met Simon on her vacation in Miami, she immediately realized that it was a chance of a lifetime for her. In order to attract the attention of the young surgeon, the woman used a cunning trick that worked flawlessly in most cases. Pretending to have twisted her leg, Ashley called out for help, knowing full well that Simon wouldn't be able to ignore her. The woman turned out to have been right. Simon couldn't just leave her in trouble. The man helped her to the hotel and tightly bandaged her injured ankle. Of course, Ashley didn't hurt anything, but she wasn't going to tell him the truth. Instead, she showered Simon with endless attention and care, which he hadn't felt in a long time. Their first encounter quickly turned into a stormy romance, causing the young surgeon to completely lose his head. Simon had always considered himself a reasonable and intelligent person, but for some reason, when he was around Ashley, he turned into a naive and gullible little boy. It's hard to say what exactly attracted the talented surgeon to the gold digger. 
Most likely, Ashley simply appeared into Simon's life at the very moment when he most needed support and help. At the same time, the cunning young beauty never told Simon that she had a younger sister who she hadn't been keeping in touch with. Of course, the young surgeon didn't know that Ashley's past life was full of casual relationships and fleeting romances. Simon had no idea how many secrets she had and how many skeletons were hiding in the closet. And she did have something to hide. Six years ago, Ashley's wild life resulted in an unplanned pregnancy, which forced the woman to give up her partying at least for a little bit. In search of a way out of her predicament, Ashley turned to her younger sister, who was her complete opposite. Tina, I don't know what to do. It's too late to terminate the pregnancy. And I don't want to be a mother. My life would be over. I don't want to be a single mother for the rest of my days. Ashley exclaimed, having a hard time keeping her emotions in check. How can you even say that? It's your baby. How can you be so cruel? Tina answered without hiding her indignation. Despite the fact that the sisters grew up together and were raised by the same people, their outlook on life was completely different. Having a relationship with a man she didn't love was unacceptable to Tina. Therefore, she treated her sister's romantic escapades with undisguised disapproval. The naive young woman dreamed of meeting her Prince Charming one day and was willing to wait for him for as long as it took. But Ashley had a different approach to her love life. She didn't feel like spending half of her life in search of the perfect man. During the entire pregnancy, all she did was complain to her sister about her fate, hinting that she would give her baby up for adoption. The older sister was counting on Tina's kindness, knowing that she wouldn't be able to allow that and would take care of the baby herself. Ashley knew her sister's weakness as well and used them shamelessly. After the birth of her son, Bobby, the new mother left him in the care of her sister and went to follow her dreams in sunny California. Before leaving, Ashley promised Tina that she would be gone for a month and that she would return for her son. It was an outright lie, but the naive younger sister didn't know that. Having become the foster mother to her nephew, Tina took on all the responsibilities of raising the boy. Time passed, but Ashley was in no hurry to come back for her son. Without even realizing when it happened, Tina became Bobby's real mother. She was always there for him and never left him for over a minute. Six years had passed. Despite the fact that Bobby considered Tina to be the closest person on earth, she always reminded the boy who his real mother was. Deep down, Tina always thought that one day, Ashley would come back and want to claim her parental rights. But the prodigal mother didn't even think about settling down and getting her son back. One day, as she was on her way home from the store, Tina got caught in a heavy downpour and got drenched. At first, the woman didn't pay much attention to it, but then she started getting chills and was running a fever by the evening. Six-year-old Bobby tried his best to help his foster mom, but he couldn't. Tina was feeling worse with each passing minute, but there was no one to help her. At some point, the woman gathered the rest of her strength and asked little Bobby for a favor. Son, could you please go to the pharmacy for me? It's not far, right around the corner on Main Street. Get me some antipyretic meds, please. Take the money from the box. Bobby was a smart boy and immediately realized what was happening. Unfortunately, the kid was in such a hurry to fulfill his mother's request that he didn't notice when the money fell out of his jacket pocket. Bobby only found out about it when he was already standing at the cash register at the pharmacy. The poor boy didn't know what to do. Well, are you gonna buy anything, son? The pharmacist asked, getting irritated. I would love to, sir, but I lost my money. Bobby said with tears in his eyes. The pharmacist only spread his hands and shook his head in response. Realizing that he was unlikely to get any meds, Bobby stepped outside and burst into tears. There were many people walking by, but none of them stopped to ask the boy what was wrong. And only Simon Patterson couldn't ignore Bobby's problem. 
Taking the boy by the hand, the young surgeon took him aside and asked him about everything in detail. So, although I'm not a general physician, I know what to do in such cases. I'll go buy everything we need and you'll take me to your mom, okay? Simon said to the boy. Seeing Tina's condition, the young surgeon gave her an antipyretic injection and put her on a drip. After that, Simon told Bobby what medications his mom needed to take and left for work. The next day, the man returned and performed the same procedures as during his first visit. Only this time, Tina was already conscious and could thank the young surgeon for his help. That went on for about a week, after which the woman slowly began to recover. Throughout this time, Simon took care of the young mother and her little son without even realizing what kind of a family secret they were hiding. Tina and Simon chatted about everything in the world and felt a strong mutual attraction. Little Bobby was looking forward to the surgeon's visits as he turned out to be such a sweet and caring man. Tina wanted to tell Simon that Bobby wasn't actually her son on numerous occasions. But every time, something came up and the woman postponed the conversation. Tina seemed like the perfect woman to Simon, the kind he'd always imagined as his partner in life. Being a smart and attentive person, the young surgeon didn't rush things and treated the woman's feelings with due understanding. The feelings that arose between the young couple could definitely be called love. Unfortunately, they were afraid to admit it to each other. And then they had a fight which seemed insignificant at first, but ended up causing their breakup. It's difficult to say for sure who exactly initiated it. Perhaps it was an honest mistake, which got complicated by misunderstanding and resentment. Having been broken up for half a year, the young people didn't even know how many surprises fate had prepared for them on their life path. Starting a relationship with Ashley, Simon couldn't have known that she was Tina's sister and Bobby's birth mother. And now, at his own wedding, the young surgeon realized what a cruel joke fate had played on him. When Simon found out that Ashley had left Bobby in her sister's care, the young surgeon saw her in a completely different light. I don't want to spend my life with a woman who betrayed the most important person in her life, her son. Simon grumbled after listening to Bobby's confusing story. The kid found out about the wedding from the news column of the local weekly newspaper. Bobby wanted to make a paper boat from a newspaper and accidentally stumbled upon the article about the upcoming celebration. Seeing his own mother in the photograph and with Simon too, the boy decided to come to their wedding. Of course, Tina had no idea what Bobby was up to. The woman only found out about it when Simon ran away from his own wedding, leaving Ashley virtually at the altar. Having told Tina everything, the young surgeon realized that he never really loved Ashley. The relationship was just a distraction, an attempt to get away from reality and forget the woman that stole his heart forever. Mom, can we forgive Simon? Bobby asked, hopefully. Tina smiled and ruffled her son's unruly hair. Of course we can, honey. How could we not? The woman added with a shy smile. The next moment, the man was already hugging Tina and spinning her around the room. Having embraced his beloved, Simon found true happiness, which turned out to be so close that all he had to do was reach out and get it. Watching his parents spinning in an impromptu waltz, Bobby thanked God for his help and hurried to join them.